Entonces, la idea es que ustedes ahora que van a estar aplicando a Fulbright y Fulbright Cal, las becas de maestrías, o si van a, public, eh, van, a, van a aplicar a cualquier otro programa que ya tengan más o menos todo, eh, tengan ya un draft casi final, y vamos a ir puliendo nomás ya eso a la hora de leer sus ensayos. De parte de Education USA, yo creo que ya muchos nos conocen, pero Education USA es una red del Departamento de Estado de los Estados Unidos, y lo que hacemos, y lo que nos mueve a cada una de las asesoras, es ayudarle a ustedes a postular a programas para estudiar en los Estados Unidos. Entonces, hoy nos acompaña Vero, que es la Senior Advisor de Education USA, y tiene su sede en Asunción. También le tenemos a Angie, que es la Advisor de San Lorenzo, y luego le tenemos a Naomi, que es nuestra nueva advisor en Ciudad del Este. Y quien les habla, Sandra y Sanabria, que estoy con Vero en Asunción. Y ahora mismo estamos 100% virtual, así que pueden escribirnos un correo a cualquiera de las tres. Y nos acompañan realmente dos invitados muy, muy especiales. Ellos dos son um, amigos, son norteamericanos, que estuvieron en Paraguay el año pasado, y bueno, por toda la situación actual tuvieron que volver a sus países. Y por un lado le tenemos a Kim Carroll. Kim es experta en lo que se trata de escribir ensayos. Se le dice el The Essay Queen, de tan buena que es. Y estuvo implementando varios programas acá en Paraguay. Ayudó a chicos que estaban aprendiendo a hablar inglés recién, ayudó a profesores de inglés a mejorar sus técnicas, y tiene una experiencia gigante en todo lo que es redacción de ensayos y el inglés como segunda lengua. Y por otro lado le tenemos a Greg, que fue un Fulbright Scholar, que significa que fue un americano, que vino a Paraguay para hacer una investigación, y luego, mientras que él estaba acá en Paraguay, decidió aplicar para hacer ya su máster en los Estados Unidos, y estará comenzando probablemente sus estudios en Johns Hopkins University, entonces Greg también puede dar muchos tips sobre la postulación en, para el programa de máster. Ya nada más, me gustaría presentarles a Kim y a Greg. Sí. I feel like you introduced us like prize fighters, like we're gonna box each other. But we're not, we're on the same team, we're on the same side. Um, to be here, super happy to be here with you all to talk to you about writing your essays. Many of you are looking at Fulbright, Becal, but this is good advice for any kind of application for grad school or jobs that you have to write essays. All of this stuff is going to apply to some degree or another to all of those situations. So we're super happy to be here with you and Sandra. So um, as she mentioned to you, uh, Greg and I are both back in the U.S. I am uh, in South Carolina where I have this little heart here. That's more or less where I live. And uh, Greg lives, hold so on. I'm from Chicago, which is right there in the middle of the country. It's a little colder than South Carolina usually, but uh, we're into the summer now, so that's, that's always good. Yes, it's summer here, but summer here is not quite as hot as summer in Paraguay, so I'm ready for summer this year. Um, just to share some pictures with you of where I live and some people I work with. Um, down in the bottom right corner is my class uh, that I worked with last year, my class of English learners. So you can see I have people from all over the world and had a good time in our, uh, in our classes. So I want to know, and Greg wants to know, and we all want to know a little bit about where you are with your essay writing process. So I want to ask you to use the chat box. So find the place where you can chat. And I'm going to ask you to answer a couple of questions. Super simple. All you have to do is type one. First question in the chat box, um, from a scale of one to five, just type in where you are. What's your progress on your Fulbright essay so far? All right, so we got numbers from all over. Um, I know your applications are due at the end of the month. So you have about 12 days, which is not a lot of time. Um, but at the same time, it's enough time to either start or put the finishing touches on your essay. Um, so today we're gonna walk through some steps to 
either begin your essay from scratch, from zero, or to really polish and, and finish uh, what you may have already started. Um, so here's the next one. Um, one, I wrote one version of my essay, or five, I wrote about 100 versions of my essay. Kim, are you back? I'm back and I'm looking right. at the chat box and I see we have all kinds of variety here from one to a hundred versions, not a hundred probably, but all right. So uh, my next question for you is more on the side of one. If no one has looked at your essay yet up to the side of five where you've gotten feedback from a lot of people. My next question. They're getting harder. So one side, one, two, if you feel like I can trust that I can express myself in writing or up to the other side around five, I don't think people understand what I'm trying to say. I think this is my last question. So one area, one, two, I hate my essay. Up to four or five, my essay is good and I'm ready to make it great. All right, good. I see a lot of people who are ready to move forward. Great. So today our idea is to take your essay from good to great and to trust your own voice in what you're trying to say because nobody else can say it for you. So this is about you. So our plan today is to confirm the structure of your essay, to find and fix sections that might need some more descriptive writing, to discover and fix some common essay writing problems, and like I said before, to trust your own voice and your ability to say what you want to say. So we're gonna let Greg get started and talk about. So oh, this question, what's important in an essay, in a Fulbright essay, um, I think at first is really simple and it's an easy answer. Um, what's important is you. It's, it's your story and how you will tell your story to the person reading your application. Um, so maybe that sounds like a simple goal, but for me, that's like a really actually difficult thing to do. Um, it's not so easy to write about yourself, it turns out. Uh, so we're gonna go through some general guidelines and strategies to write about yourself in your application and how to do so. So no matter where you are in the process, if you wrote down one or five on all the uh, previous questions, I think these guidelines can hopefully help you out along the way. So um, the first, so there's two components, two parts of a Fulbright application. Um, for the essays. The first is the study and research objective. Uh, you can think of this as like your purpose, right? It's your, it's your goal. You are writing about your, your goals of study, your goals for your research, your goals for the next couple years ahead. So again, this may seem obvious to you. You may know exactly what your goal is. But the question is how do you express, how do you describe your goal in an effective and uh, clear way to the reader, right? So in order to tell the, uh, the people reading your essay, right, what your goals are, it helps to talk about yourself. It helps to tell your story. Um, your story can include your interests, your previous studies, right? Um, again, your goals now and over the next couple of years and your future goals, right? Your goals beyond after Fulbright. So think of this as a story, right? How to tell your story. I think one way to tell your story is to connect your story to a bigger picture. Connect your story to the world around you. So think, why, why is your story important? Why should someone care about your story, right? There's probably many reasons, but 
the challenge is to come up, or the challenge is to think of a really compelling reason to present in your essay. And maybe most importantly is why is Fulbright uh, the right way to reach those goals? How does Fulbright form a part of your story? And if you can demonstrate why Fulbright is uh, the right way to go about uh, achieving your goals, then you present a more compelling application. So maybe you have many ideas swirling in your mind. Um, it often helps to come up with a really specific reason or a specific goal you have, a specific example of your interests or a specific uh, story that you have about your studies. And then use that specific example to talk about the bigger ideas, right? So I'll give you a personal example. So maybe this can help illustrate uh, these kind of broad, wide guidelines. So, um, so I just finished applying to graduate schools um, and I had to write a lot of essays and I was thinking through these same ideas. So this diagram can help you make that essay possible, right? Um, you have your past, what you've done before, where you've worked, where you studied, what you studied, and then you have your future, what you want to study with your Fulbright, what you want to research, where you want to work in the future, right? Then your essay, the job of your essay, is to say how Fulbright will connect the two, past and future. Um, okay, so I'll give my specific example. So when I was applying to graduate school, I was applying to international studies programs. Um, so that was my future. My future is I want to study international relations. My past was I studied history in, for my bachelor's. So I studied history. Um, I actually wrote my thesis on Jose Gaspar Rodriguez de Francia. Um, and I went to Paraguay and I wrote about Dr. Francia. So I, my education was history, but what I want to study, what I want to work in is, is international relations in the present. So in my application, I wrote about how um, the program I was applying to can make that connection, can take my past studies and transfer that into my future goals. Okay, so that's one, that's one of the two essays that um, you would write for Fulbright. The second is the personal statement. So again, this is all about you, which makes sense. Um, the personal statement is your chance to expand upon your resume. Right? So on your resume, it's usually a list of your experience, your studies. The personal statement is a way for you to bring your resume to life or you make your resume more interesting. Um, you pick out the most important parts of your resume and you can talk about them more. Um, and you can make a story of your resume. Again, I think we all like to read stories and stories are interesting to us. So for the reader of your application, um, if you can tell a good story, I think your application will be more interesting. Me? thinking about resumes and your personal statement is what, what is the thing on your resume that you feel like doesn't really, it doesn't show, doesn't show up. So when you read your resume and you say, Oh, I've done all these things, but what they can't understand from my resume is that I blank. Maybe that's the thing that can be what your story and your personal statement is about. Yeah. yeah this is your chance to pick out, what you want to present to the people reading your application um, and really highlight your strengths. Um, I think your essays are your chance to 
to show the best side of you. And uh, that's like a really good opportunity to, to do so uh, in comparison to other parts of your application. Okay, and uh, finally, so um, when I was applying to Fulbright two years, a couple of years ago, uh, I also went to a writing workshop like this. And the person presenting, the teacher said, it's not about you, it's about the reader. I said, really? I'm like, didn't I just tell you that, it, that it's all about you? Like your personal statement, it's all about you. Your application, it's all about you. And that's true, but you should always think about who is reading your application and what do they want to see in you. So remember who your audience is and try to understand what they are looking for. So for Fulbright, Fulbright is a program that's international, right? Fulbright wants to create stronger international ties and a stronger, um, stronger educational system in, in the world. So, so maybe you can emphasize or highlight certain things about yourself that demonstrate that you too are, are global or you're worldly, right? So think about your audience and who's reading your application and what they want to see. So once you have your ideas down, and I know most of you, looks like all of you, pretty much have at least one draft of your essay that you're working with. For the next few minutes, I want you to be thinking about or looking at your essay, and we're going to talk about some different parts of it quickly, and then I hope that you will take this information and you will sit down with your essay and work on this stuff later, because we don't have time now to take 20 minutes and do this. So we're going to give you all the information now, and then Hopefully you'll take it and work on it later. So most essays fall into two kinds of ways to tell your story. One is called a narrative and one is called a montage. Um, a, a narrative and the montage are basically how you tell your story. And the second half, what you say, like what is this defining thing about you that makes you different or makes you unique? I like to say your superpower, but it doesn't mean I'm super, I'm better than everyone. It just means, what's the thing about you that the Fulbright Commission should say, yeah, that's the person we want. So that's what you're looking for. You have your how you say and what you say. Okay, so what I want you to think about is that how you say it part, how you tell your story. So the narrative kind of story is one that has a beginning and a middle and the end, and it usually progresses through time. It's got a sequence. It's like this road picture that I have in front of you. So maybe you're telling about a certain event in your life. This is the thing that happened. I prepared for it. I did it. Here's the problems I encountered. Here's how I solved the problem. That's a narrative story. If you think about a fairy tale or something, something happens in a in, a, in an order. A montage kind of story, I have a picture of a puzzle there because it's like take, taking different pieces of your life and your experience and your interests and putting them together to create something that tells the story about you, that tells the bigger picture, okay? So your essay probably falls into either the narrative category where you have one story you tell from beginning to end, or the montage category where you have a lot of smaller stories together to build the big picture. So my questions for you about how you tell your story and what you say that I want you to think about later is, what is the structure of your essay? Is it more a narrative, one story, or is it more a montage like a bunch of little stories put together? The second question is, what is that thing you're trying to say in your story? What's the story you're trying to tell? Or what's your superpower? And then putting those two things together, how does the structure of how you're creating the essay show off the thing that you're trying to say? Right? So let me give you an example in case that sounds kind of crazy. Um, if I want to say that I'm, um, I'm a hard worker, for example, like I have 
perseverance, that I will do the job until it gets done. Let's say that's the idea that I want to talk about. One way I can present that idea is to tell about one thing that happened. Like one time I was working in this place and here's the problem and here are all the steps I took to solve it. I really persevered. That would be a narrative. Or if it's a montage, it might say, when I was five, I started playing the flute and I had to practice every day, even as a little kid. So that helped me build my thing, that my, my perseverance. And then when I was 10, um, I read a really, really long book and it took me a year. That helped me build the perseverance. Does that make sense, the difference? So think about, does the way you're telling your story help with what you're trying to say? And if it doesn't, then think about how you can, how you can really make the two go together. Again, this is your homework for you to work on later. Okay. So looking again at your essay, there's really quickly two parts to think about. Today, we're going to focus just on the introduction. I have some questions for you about your introduction and the conclusion and how you can make those really strong so that you can have a really solid essay. So thinking about the introduction, I have my picture here with a crystal ball on it. Why? Because with the crystal ball, you can tell the future. And also in your introduction, you should be able to see into the rest of your essay. So by the beginning of the introduction, and the introduction includes the hook or the thing that grabs your attention, it will have the main idea or the focus of your essay, and it will establish the tone and voice of your essay. Like, is it kind of funny, kind of informal, or very serious, or maybe a little scary? What, what are you trying to, how are you trying to say it? So I have an example here. So let's just read through this example together and we can talk about it. When I was a little girl, I imagined I had superpowers. Deadly lasers would shoot from my eyes, pulverizing the monsters hiding under my bed. Mom would wonder where I magically disappeared to after I turned invisible as she forced me to eat that plate of broccoli. It was the wish I made on every birthday candle and upon every bright star. Who knew my dream would come true? So I don't know about you, but when I read this, I want to know more. It makes me really curious, like, oh. She has a superpower? What? How is that possible? Tell me more. So this, this essay, this first paragraph, introduction of the essay, is very enticing. It makes me curious to know more. Okay, so I have some questions here for you. For your essay, does the opening hook the reader? When someone reads your essay, do they want to know more? Do you know how many essays people have to read when they're, when they're reading Fulbright essays? A lot. So you don't want to be the one that makes them go, oh my God, another one, the same as the last. You want to be the one that makes them go, whoa, that's interesting. What happens next? So go back and look at your introduction. Is there something there that makes the reader want to know more? Oh, Second, yeah, Greg, go ahead. Let me just jump in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that point is really important that that um, the people reading your application, they're going to read a lot of essays. And so it's it's important to really set your essay apart. Um, but I think an effective way to do that is just to come up with a really uh, specific example, a really specific anecdote, just like uh, the one that Kim read. And your attention grabber, the way you grab the attention of the reader, it can be just a simple story or a simple thing that happened to you. Um, and those are often the most effective ways to talk about your broader goals. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be how you save the world or travel to India. And I mean, it can be something very simple. But just make it, make it so that the person reading gets curious. That's, I think, the most important part. The other thing your introduction has to have is your focus or main idea. So by the end of that introduction, do they know what is the main idea or focus of your essay? In our example, 
she says she has a superpower. So I would say the focus of this essay is she's going to tell us what that superpower is. And I want to know what it is. So when you go and read your essay, by the end of the introduction, does the reader know what direction you're going in, what you're going to talk about? Is there a theme? It's probably not a thesis statement because it's less formal than that kind of paper, but do we know where you're going by the end of the introduction? And the third one, and I'll say this one, and then Greg, you can um, add anything else I'm missing here. Does the introduction set an interesting tone and establish a voice of the speaker? So in our example, she was telling the story from the eyes of her being a little child, right? She's like, when I was a kid and my mom and I would get invisible and she didn't, I didn't want to eat my broccoli. So she has kind of a, a light and playful way to introduce her idea. Her idea is quite serious and you guys will have access to her essay so you can read the whole thing. Um, she talks and she gets into some really heavy things that she experienced in her life. But the tone of this is like from the eyes of a child. And the way I like to imagine is if someone were going to make a movie of your essay, what would be happening? What would you see? So here's my questions at the bottom here. Imagine if this were the beginning of a movie, what would the narrator sound like? Would there be music? What the camera angle would be doing? Of course, we don't have to make a video, thank goodness, because that would take longer than an essay. But we have to use words in a way that establishes the tone so that you can follow that through the end of your essay. Anything you want to add, Greg? Yeah, I think it's also important to remember that you don't have that much space to write your essay. Mm -hmm. Like there's, you can't write 10 pages, right? Um, so the challenge is to find the right balance between the first paragraph, which gets the reader's attention, and the substance or the body of the essay and what you really want to say. So that's why it's uh, in, the, in these next, you know, 10 days, maybe you can play around, you can experiment with different balances of specific example and main body or attention grabber and the real substance of your essay. Mm -hmm. But the first example is pretty long for an introduction, but the second example is very short. So you don't have to use all, all your words during the introduction. You can make it as short as you can, but still establish the tone and make sure that your main idea is pretty clear by the time you get to the beginning of that first paragraph. One is, um, how do you know who will read your essay or your mm. story? So we don't know the exact person obviously, who's going to read the essay. But we know it's usually going to be a team of people. It'll be a committee or a commission who are going to be reading through all of the essays. Um, and Greg, I will let you talk a little more about uh, the Fulbright, if you know more about that. or I guess I don't know who exactly is mm -hmm. reading your essays, but um, you can kind of, you can guess uh, what they are looking for, right? Mm -hmm. um, so... I mentioned this earlier, but Fulbright is an exchange program, right? The mission of Fulbright is to strengthen international ties. So if, if your essay uh, at least hints at or includes a bit about how your studies will be important to maybe make, your, make Paraguay a better place, make the United States a better place, strengthen international ties between Paraguay and the United States, or at least show some, um, at least show that you are aware that your studies are important, right? Um, and I think the people reading your essays, whoever they are, uh, will find that, I think, I think, they'll highlight those applications that, that have a sense of importance, right? That, that are bigger than just themselves. I would say no matter what you're applying for, if it's Fulbright or if it's graduate school, do a little bit of research, right? Don't just, oh, this looks cool. I don't know anything about the program. Let me write this. You know, go to the website, read what the program's goals are, read what they're looking for in a candidate. 
um, I was just working on applications for a job. And first thing I did, what are they looking for? What kind of candidate do they want? And then I have some idea into what they're looking for. So yeah. make sure that you do that. And yeah, exactly. That's a, that's, that's a great point. Um, one of the schools I just applied to for, uh, grad, for my master's was um, their emphasis was on kind of moral values or ethical education. Um, so in my application, I, I, I changed my essay from a previous school to, to reflect that my motivation to apply to this program was ba is based on the fact that I also am searching for that type of program. So uh, yeah, it's really important to do your research ahead of time. Um, if you're applying to a specific school and look for the values that they are interested in. So for the Fulbright case, you will have two embassy officers and Las Paus experts. I don't know what that is, but maybe you all do. Um, will be the, the panel who will be reading the essays for Fulbright. Is there a word limit for the study plan and the personal statement? Las Paus an agency, thank you. It will be uh, one and a half pages, more or less. Okay. The conclusion I'm talking about here is the conclusion of your essay, not of just the introduction. Someone asked that question. Um, and so let me talk about this really quickly, about some things that you want to look for in the conclusion of your essay. Just like at the beginning, you wanted to have a feeling of curiosity. At the end, you want the reader to have a feeling of completion. Like, you know, when you read a really good book, and then the book ends and you're like, oh, so good. Or a good movie, like you finish the movie, you're like, oh, that movie was amazing. You want the reader to have that feeling about your essay. I know that might sound crazy, but really, it can happen. I've read a lot of essays and, and there are some that just when you get to the end, you're like, oh, that was beautiful. So you want someone to have that feeling as they read your essay. Second, is it organized, the whole essay and also the conclusion? Is there a central idea through your whole essay that at the end becomes clear, like wrapped up with a bow? I understand how it all works together. And finally, does your personality come through in this essay? Uh, do we know what you care about? Do we have a sense of who you are from reading that essay? Because all of your data where you went to school, how many years you've worked, what grades you got, all of that is on your resume. The essay is for us to understand who you are as a person. So as you're finishing up the conclusion of your essay, this is something you wanna look back and see. Does it feel personal? Okay, so this is the closing uh, of that same essay we read about the girl with the superpowers. So let's read through this one together and you can see if it meets that criteria. Much of the little girl yearning for superpowers remains a part of me, but now I have moved beyond wishing for powers to acquiring a deeper understanding of how superpowers work. While I never fulfilled my wish to run at lightning speeds or shoot spider webs from my fingers, my experiences with art have taught me that the greatest superpowers lie within each of us and the powers to create, express, and connect in meaningful ways. Every girl deserves the chance to dream, and I am just lucky mine came true. So we know now at the conclusion, we know what her superpower is. It's art, but not only art, art to create, to express, and to connect. And the rest of her essay, you'll see she has one paragraph about each of those subtopics under art. So this is a, a conclusion that wraps up, shows the personality, shows what the person cares about, and is very clear. Again, it's a little long if you have a short essay, but it gives you the idea. These are the questions I have for you with your essay. When someone reads it, do they have a ah, feeling of closure when they're done? Is it organized? And does it continue the same idea throughout the essay all the way to the end? And finally, does your personality come through? And do we know what you care about by the time we get to the bottom of your essay? So what we didn't talk about the middle of your essay because the beginning and the end, I think, are key points. And the middle, obviously, you're going to follow 
through on your same idea throughout the whole essay. I'm going to give you the sample essays and also you'll have access to this PowerPoint so that you can read through, go back to these questions and look at the kinds of things that you want to do. Further on, there's a couple of kind of grammatical problems that people often have when they write essays. And I wanna make sure you have a chance to do that as well. We don't have too much time today because we want to make sure we have time for your questions, so. How to do an essay in the narrative form for graduate studies? Yeah, so you certainly want to focus on your studies, right? Your professional goals. Um, and your narrative is your professional goals, right? It's your professional path. Um, but I, you, it's hard to tell your professional goals. It's hard to describe your, your academic interests without telling the reader about yourself, right? So um, you're right. All, all of your essays should not be about your past. Most of it should be about your proposed studies and your, your goals ahead. But in order to describe those effectively, it, it helps to establish uh, your background a bit. Um, so there's no, there's no magic formula or magic equation to follow. Like one paragraph does not have to be about your past and then two about your future. There's no set number, but um, again, the more drafts you do, the more time you spend on your essay, I think you can find the right balance just through, just through time. Can you give specific tips for the middle part of the essay? How do you express your main ideas properly? Um, I think Greg just kind of mentioned that there's not one particular way to do it. It just depends what it is that you are trying to say about yourself and how you want to express that. So for example, I'm gonna go back to my, my, yes, this example, this girl here, you're only seeing her, her um, conclusion and you also saw the introduction, but I'll explain how she did her body paragraph. You have the introduction, which she says, oh, I have this superpower, makes you super curious. And then she has three paragraphs in the body of her essay. One is about how she uses art to create, as she says here. One shows her how she uses art, how she, and, and this, she had a montage. So the art to create was when she was a child and her mom was sick. And so she had to create to stay sane. Really, she had a, a struggle. One was art to express. And she had a different story about how she used art to express her feelings. And then the third one, art to connect, was another little story about when she traveled and taught art to some little kids that didn't have a lot of resources and how she connected with them and helped them connect with themselves in the communities. So in this case, she had three different paragraphs describing three parts of how her passion art has worked in her life. So if you have one main thing that you're trying to say, you might touch on different aspects of that main thing. Or maybe you have three things you want to say. Um, either my three qualities that I think are make me a good applicant for your program. And maybe each paragraph is a different quality. Um, but I think one is plenty and you can just talk about different aspects of it. There's not one right way to write your body paragraphs. The only thing that's important, one of the only things that are important is that it's coherent from beginning to end. So the beginning, I tell you, I have a superpower. My superpower is art to create, art to express, art to connect, and then the conclusion, I'm glad I have this opportunity. Okay, so having, having it organized is important, but there's not one way to organize it. Greg, what do you want to add? Yeah, I, I, think, I think sometimes it's, uh, it's tempting or it's easy to try to put as many ideas in your essay as you can or try to include everything about you everything you've ever done right and uh it makes sense you want to show the the readers that you've done a lot of things and that you're qualified but it's often more effective to 
really concentrate on just one or two core strengths that you have or one, one uh, narrative that really describes you best. Um, because again, you don't have that much space to, to tell your story. So uh, focus on one or two ideas and then you can develop those to their full extent. I'll tell you quickly a story. I've been writing um, essays lately for a job, but there were three essays that I had to write. One was a personal statement, and then one describing an experience where I showed leadership, and one describing an, very typical essays for grad school or for, for getting into a program. And I, what, it was 300 words, which is not very much, and so I had to tell my personal statement about why I want to do this in this much space. So of course I probably, I don't know how many drafts I wrote a lot and I couldn't get it short enough. And what I ended up doing was instead of saying, look, I can do these 75 things. That's why you should hire me. I was able to talk about one event in my life and how that event let me have, let me show leadership skills in this and all the things they were looking for in that one event. And so a lot of times we struggle with getting everything in the small amount of words that we have. So think about how one event or one quality that you have or one thing in your life that's important can express many things about you. Sometimes that's an easier way to go forward. Yeah. And in any application, whether it's Fulbright or, or application to grad school, um, you, you submit a resume which has everything you've done, right? The essay is your chance to pick the best, you know, to pick your strongest strengths, right? And, and include those in your essay. What cliches to avoid and about quotation? If you use a quote, make sure it's correct and make sure you cite who said the quotes first. Okay, I, I think quotes can be effective sometimes, but um, don't rely on a quote to grab the reader's attention because the essay is really about you and your story and not you know, someone else. So if the quote can help describe you, Sure, use it, but uh, I, I don't think you need a quote to, to tell the reader who you are. It can be a cliche. It just depends on the quote. If it's like really common one that everybody's going to rely on for their essay, then I wouldn't use it. You don't want your essay to look like anybody else's. If you're using it in an interesting or unique way or in an interesting place in your essay, not the first sentence, then I think it can make your essay be unique. Your, the most important thing is focusing on showing your personality, showing us what you care about and how that fits in with the program that you're applying to. And if you're doing that, you're gonna avoid the cliches. When you start making your essay look like other people's, now you're gonna be in cliches all the time. Really good essays. Um, they're about you and your interests and your goals and your passion, but they connect your passion, your goal to the outside world. So if you can tell your story in a way that makes your story important to something beyond you, that's a really strong essay. Right? Um, so there's many ways you can go about that. and. Uh, um, that's an easy way to avoid a cliche is, is to connect your story to, to something bigger than yourself. Something that I have seen, it's like um, so many people um, just like want to make it very like um, interesting and like um, give a lot of details, but they're not really specific. And you are applying for a grad school technically, even though you're just applying for the Fulbright right now. So my advice would be for anyone or like for the Fulbright and Fulbright call applicants, it would be you can give a background so you can tell why you're interested um, in chemistry or why you're interested in um, physics. 
And then you need to talk about your preparation. You don't need to tell everything that's on your CV. Like your CV will talk about that, but you can talk about how you became more knowledgeable of that topic through um, your academics. And also like if you, I don't know, if you represented the country in, I don't know, you wrote a paper that was very important in that topic, or if you led um, a project in that area, you can talk about that. So you tell, this is what I'm interested in. Here I'm telling you how I have shown leadership and how I have shown that I'm interested in that area. But then you also need to state the problem. Like what, like what's the problem in Paraguay or in your community that you want to address through your master? And then what you plan to do after you come back to Paraguay? So let's say you're very interested in, I don't know, like um, bacteria and you have been leading like science camps and all that. You would say, okay, um, in XX community or in X city, there are over 20 families who have never had access to vaccines. I, I plan to pursue a master in biology in order to and uh, learn more about this topic. And when I come back, I want to like have links or partnerships between the National University and this biology center or something that it's really tangible. So you don't want to say, I'm going to save the world, but you can talk about how you're going to impact your community. Um, that's just like the, for the Fulbright and Fulbright call applicants, because a lot of people are talking about like, this is going to help me, but they don't mention how um, the master is going to really help them. They got to be specific about how the master will help them and how it will also impact the community. That's a great point um, because the Fulbright Commission is, is, they'll be asking themselves, why should we give this person all this money to travel all the way to another country to study this? And if you can demonstrate why you're a great candidate for that, right? Why um, your studies would be enhanced or, or why your studies would progress um, because you, you were able to go to this program specifically and come back and do that, then that's a really strong application. I want you to think about, maybe make a list for yourself. Um, what happens next? Going back to your essay. Um, looking at your introduction, looking to see that it makes people curious, that it, the main idea is clear, and that you've established how you want the essay to sound. Look throughout your essay that you have good descriptive writing. We always say, show, what is it? Show me, don't tell me. <laughs> show me, to give me examples, give me details about the event, not just, I was sad, but I cried. I mean, just, you know, give the details. In the conclusion, is there a sense of closure? Something that makes the reader feel like it's come to a good ending? Does it follow the main idea? Um, have you fixed all of your grammar issues? We didn't even talk about this, but once you have your essay structure, you have your ideas, you have how you want it to sound, now is the time to go in and fix all the grammar problems because nobody wants to read an essay when they receive and they have a thousand essays to read. And if yours is full of grammar mistakes, it's going to be problematic. So use different grammar things. You know, on my computer, it tells me when I have a grammar issue, fix those, fix the spelling. Um, I have a couple exercises for you that I'm going to send you to look at run on sentences or too long sentences or unclear pronouns and you're going to have a link to that have someone else read your essay see what they think have them edit look for problems and mistakes and um that's what i just said ask your readers to give you specific feedback so instead of giving your essay to someone and saying can you read this which is fine but what about asking them for specific feedback that you want? Like, can you read my introduction and tell me if you feel like you have a clear sense of what's going to happen in my essay? Or can you read my essay and look for places that I could be more descriptive? 
ask for specific feedback and you'll get more specific feedback. If not, people reading your essays can be like, oh yeah, it was good and give it back. So the more specific you can be, the better. And finally, trust that your essay is good. Trust that you are using your voice to say what you want to say and don't be, don't give your essay to a million people and then change it every single time to fit what they want. Of course, they can help you with different points, but trust that you are telling your story in a good way that will allow someone to understand who you are. And if you know, if you know other Fulbrighters currently or former Fulbrighters, ask them to read their essays. Mm -hmm. And for me, that helped a lot during my application process is that I, I found people who were going to the program that I wanted to be in. And I asked them, can you, hey, can you send me your essays that you wrote? Because um, I know those, those essays worked, those were successful. Um, and then you can, you can kind of change your application depending on what worked and what didn't. I know this is, we gave you a lot of information and you may be asking yourself, I didn't do this right, or I'm not doing this, but there, there's no one formula. Uh, I think the best advice that I could give you is, is spend as much time as you can on your essays for both Fulbright or your graduate program later, um, because the more time you spend on it, the better it will be. It's just as simple as that. I wanna add something in there, Greg, just from my recent experience. Spend, I totally agree, spend as much time as you can, but also give yourself breaks, right? So now at this point, you don't have a lot of time in between, but give yourself, like, get to like the best level you think you can get it and then don't look at it for 24 hours. And then the next day when you go back, you're gonna see more things that you can update or change or make better. So sometimes taking the little break can really help as well. Good luck to everyone. Um, thank you for having us and letting us talk about writing and, and I wish you all the best of luck.